Hello, everybody. Today is October 26th, 2023. And I thought that this time that the Lord said in the next two weeks, I'm going to be showing you what I want you to come into and come out of. We're going to regroup. We're going to we're going to scale down. We're going to get disciplined. We're going to listen to the spirit of God and hear what he's saying and telling in a different format, uh, more so about the direction we're heading in. And I think I thought that that was going to be a relaxed time period. <laughs> I see that it is more or less a spiritual time period, meaning it is a time period where God is developing spiritual purposes. And in that time period, I have been getting um, a different kind of revelation from him. Just, I've been getting the same revelation as far as like in the word and, um, and uh, the truth and uh, breaking it down and what he really meant. Um, but he's heading in a direction Boy, oh boy, Lord, yes. He said, I'm heading in a direction to bring us back full circle, aren't I? And I said, yes, because he has need of explaining salvation and faith again. And and folks, we, we would think that this is like a simplistic, fundamental base understanding of the foundation uh, that we're already formed on in this relationship that we have um, undergo undergoing it with God in this earth if we believe he is our God and our Savior and, and our Lord, right? But he says, no, <laughs> unfortunately, that's really sad. Um, we don't understand salvation, really. Um, we understand religion, the spirit of religion's uh, um, definition of salvation out there. But it is twisted and it is perverted and it is of the devil doctrine and precepts of men, which is really the teaching and the um, understanding of man from the lower realm from those sensual devilish earthly wisdoms and understanding it is it is actually a viewpoint of salvation and faith that comes from a fallen man down here and not from high above where his ways and his thoughts are are high above um, how we function and understand things down here in our unredeemed souls if you will our unsanctified souls and I find that horrifying because really what he's telling me is my church is very, very sick, Janet. I mean, spiritually sick. They are following the spirit of religion and they're being Pied Piper right off the um, broad path into the pit. Quite literally, he means that there are people departing um, who have believed religion and uh, and they'll say, Lord, Lord to him. And he'll be like, like I, I never knew you. Uh, because they knew religion, but they didn't know him. Um, they knew facts from the Bible, but they didn't um, become the truth, nor did the truth become rooted and founded in them. They were not founded on the rock. The rock was not found in them or founded in them. And that's horrifyingly sad to me. Right. So as I as I ponder these things with him, I sit and say to him, as I do with all things, what can be done? What do we do? What can we do? Number one, he said we can reveal the truth. Man doesn't want to hear uh, truth if man does not uphold righteousness and holiness as a value to attain to in life. Meaning, if we are a people who say, I don't need to do anything, I don't need to change, he forgave it all, um, then then essentially, if you really break that down, you're saying, I don't know that I want to walk holy or righteous like him. And if we actually admit that, then we will realize that we don't want a Holy Spirit, nor to be led by his Holy Spirit, nor to have our souls led of a Holy Spirit and his Holy Spirit and be reformed back into righteousness and holiness. We fundamentally are rejecting righteousness and holiness because we say we don't want to have to do anything. We shouldn't have to do anything. He did it all right. He was the one that had to live in righteousness and holiness. And yet scripture says that God's whole function and point is to return us back to Jesus's image, the, the image of the son. 
So if he doesn't walk in unrighteousness and darkness and unholiness, then how, if we're being reformed back into his image, can we remain unchanged, unredeemed, and reprobate? This is horrifyingly sad. Horrifyingly sad because... We have loved ones and acquaintances and people we know and a world by far and large of people we don't know who are going to depart from my God forever, eternally, who are departed from him now, who are estranged from him now. And yet we, we the believers, are called to a great commission with our father, with our, with our bridegroom, with our Lord and Savior to reconcile right because they have to come through the door which is yeshua jesus the christ they have to come through the messiah to be reconciled to the father and yet we have need of laborers out there who are going to bring this truth to humanity by far and wide so that they can understand that you have to know him you have to know him be introduced to him and he'll lead you back to the father because he'll give you his Holy Spirit that was shed abroad for all of us who will bring us into all truth. It isn't just a knowledge of it. We were never saved from a tree of knowledge. We're saved when we enter and are grafted into the tree of life. When we're grafted into something, you become that thing. That thing becomes a cohesive unit. It is one unit. Now, it is no longer something that was grafted in. It took and it grew and it became part of that tree and so the tree of life has no darkness or variance in him no sin or transgressing of god's way is found in that tree so fundamentally we have to let go of all that in order to be grafted in and remain right because there are even original branches who he says because they withered and died they have to be cut off they're cut away they're removed and they're cast out from the tree he says, don't, don't, don't you rejoice in any of that. That is a very sad thing. Rejoice rather that because of your faith and the working of your live and successful faith in me, in God, in the Savior, in your bridegroom, that you're grafted in and that your branch is taking. But be, be, be grateful, though, that the one who did that is able to graft them in again, too. Those unprofitable branches, if they'll come back to him, if they'll come back to life, quite literally and spiritually come back to life in Christ, in and through the Messiah, accepting him and accepting him in to do the Reformation work. But be careful, lest you become like they and you too are cut off, he said. When he says, I want to bring us full circle back to the Garden of Eden, where you all rebelled me and you became estranged and you decided within the garden or the heart and soul of man that you would leave me and my way and my counsel and my fathering you. You understand salvation is to come back to that, to come back to me. And my son is the example. My son, Yeshua HaMashiach. Jesus the Christ is the example of how to do that. So study his life. Study with him. Study under him. Be a disciplined one under him. And he will return you to me. And as you return to me, then you will allow me to do what I wanted to do in the beginning, which is father you in my ways and raise you up and speak and commune with you daily inside, inside man, in the garden where you will no longer reject me, nor my holiness, nor my wisdom, which is far above this fallen realm and fallen base nature of Satan, which is self-leadership. Satan is self-leadership, that it walks contrary to God holy and righteous. So if you are to come back to me, children, you will come back to holiness and righteousness, and you will submit yourselves to me. You will throw down Satan. You will throw down self-leadership based in your own reasonings and from a lower perspective and a broken, reprobate, 
rebellious spirit that comes against me. You will take, you will graft into the new spirit, which is me. And you will allow me to do my work inside of you. Reconfiguring you, getting my hands in there and reforming that which became mutated and fallen. And took on another shape and form. And as I do this, as you will uphold the truth now, throwing down lies, and you will uphold as valuable and as a treasure, holiness and righteousness and the king thereof, we will come full circle back to me being your father, fathering you in your ways, and we will begin anew again in the garden or in the heart and the life of man. In that, we have to have an understanding of what is real salvation and faith. Because salvation was his works, and it is still going to be his works in each and every man's soul. Given us a new spirit, which was his, to come into alignment with, but faith has workings too. Faith is a working of that salvation, work out your salvation. And faith without these workings is dead, or we are estranged and have not taken to the tree. We have not taken to the vine. The grafting didn't take. So our faith very much has works. Those are ours. Salvation has works too, but they are his. We have to partner together in this life. And he's bringing this up because of the time period that we we're in. First of all, we were supposed to get this a long time ago. We were supposed to. We were supposed to actually turn our faces and our hearts away from everything in this world that is flashing its lights and sounds at us to distract us and pull us away from locking down with him. And that Bible, that written scripture, that written word of God, which which it says the books were not enough to contain. There's not enough books to contain all that Christ actually did while he was here. So we only have a tiny portion of God's example in there. Those books that we do have were supposed to bring us to the internal kingdom and to reunite with God in there. That is the whole purpose of the scriptures. Who is he? What is he about? Who is Satan? What is he about? What is their, their contrary, their opposite, their hostile uh, enemies? Um, and you need to choose in this lifetime and every day who you're going to serve. Because this choice in this lifetime will lead you to the eternal life, either with God or without God, either in support of holiness and righteousness or not. And we'll find that out by what faith you actually live. And your faith that you actually live is based on what salvation or belief system of religion you really have going on inside. What are you being saved from? Who are you being saved from? Who are you being reconciled to? And to what are you being reconciled to? If we don't understand these things in this lifetime, we very much are headed down a broad path and separation from God eternal. If we believe just everything man has taught us, we will fail. That's why he said, I give you the Holy Spirit who will bring you into all truth, not man. He did not tell us man would do this. Preachers, teachers, apostles, prophets, evangelists, etc. and so on. You cannot rely on man the way you can rely on God. Now, depending upon the sanctification level that each man is at with God will determine what amount of truth you get. Cleaned up, unadulterated truth. But we have a very few amount of those pillars that are in the earth right now, he tells me. We have um, a large harvest to pull in and we have few laborers. So we're in the time period where God is about to make some more laborers. That is going to come in on the heels of judgment and fiery refinement. We are going to go through a time period that man has never been introduced to in the history of God. We have seen examples of it. We have seen what World War II can look like and all the rest of the slaughters that we have seen and the devastation that can happen in this world. But it's going to come at a level that men and women have not been tried at ever before. It's like a combination of a whole bunch of time periods pulled together. <sighs> 
And in that, we will enter the great harvest. We will enter the great time period where God's children, his true children, who have united and become one with him in spirit and, and their souls are being ruled by him, will work this great work in great darkness where their light shines so brightly because he himself will have anointed them and come upon them to set captives free, which is to pull people out of the fire and, in, and out of the enemy's kingdom and into the family of God. They will work the walk in witness of salvation, the salvation of Christ and the, and the belief system, the, the faith of that gospel and they will witness that to the children of the, of the lost sheep that are out there that need to be redeemed and pulled in they will witness that to the children because he himself will witness straight through them and they will have an encounter with the living god through his children or his duplicates his seedlings who took to the vine and get their sustenance straight from the source now Because in a time period of great and gross darkness and judgment, we have need of a Savior and of a God and of light. But in a world that is filled with the spirit thereof and of compromise, of being lukewarm at best and completely and entirely reprobate and apostate at worst, we are about to enter a time period where there will be a famine of the word of God. I think that that's a couple fold. It is literal. The scripture is going to be um, removed in some way, shape or form, whether that's literally taking it from us, changing it, perverting it, uh, making it outlawed, etc. and so on. But even deeper than that, it's going to be a famine of, of, wait a minute, which people actually know the real living God. And he's going to make hypocrisies known. We have that to look forward to. He's going to shine a light. When, when, when the Holy Spirit comes, like at a second Pentecost, to anoint his children in gross darkness, to help pull people out of the fire, out of the kingdom of hell, and into his family to be saved. When a holy God shows up and he drops his Holy Spirit upon humanity, everything that is not of light will run and flee from the light it'll freak out and it'll show and manifest everywhere in our lives where we walk in hypocrisy to god it's going to be easily known and i'm talking about humanity in general if we have preachers and teachers and apostles and prophets and etc who are working out of pulpits and microphones and videos and recordings and postings that are actually living a different life behind the closed scenes that god knows from the heart it's going to be revealed it should be revealed because we shouldn't be leading a whole bunch of other people in lies and hypocrisy because it's, it isn't what we say. It isn't even what we teach. It's what we actually are inside. And that is going to have to be shown abroad to every man. And so it's going to come with shaking. All nations, all people will shake where the kingdom of God is not because we come from God's kingdom and his children come from a kingdom that cannot be shaken. They'll be rock solid no matter what's happening. And so every way in every way that we are not, he's going to show and reveal to us what we're really believing inside and upholding and where these other spirits have gotten their hooks and claws into us with their influences and we have assimilated into that. And it's got to be changed. No more hypocrisy. No more living with one foot on the side of I've got the truth and I've got the scripture, uh, but the other foot on the other side where, but I am in the world and of the world. I don't walk like Jesus walks. I don't talk like he talks. I don't know what he knows. I don't move like how he moves. I don't believe like how he believed, which is where he only did what the Holy Father did and showed him, period. That's it. Where we're living, that hypocrisy. He's got to show us because the love of God and the mercy of God is to show us where, where we are actually estranged from him and we're duped thinking that we're good and we're not meaning good on good terms. And we're, and we're, we're squared away with God and we're not. 
So his light's going to come and shine on all of that. And as it does, we're going to ha have need of a people that actually know the living God and uphold the living God and, uh, and know the truth and uphold the truth and find both of those things, the living God and truth and righteousness as treasures uh, and are becoming truth and righteousness. That's the whole point of salvation is to return us to being beings who live, breathe, and find their being in truth and righteousness and holiness. And the love of God will be shed abroad through those children of him because they will go out and witness salvation. They'll witness the gospel and what it truly is and why he truly came and did what he did, which was to unite man back to him and to be conformed back into the image of his son, period. If that reformation process is not taking place, we have people that are adhering to religion and they're being pied pipered by the spirit of religion, who is the spirit of this world, who is Satan who walks in compromise and comforts of the carnal flesh and the pride of life and the lusts of the flesh. What, what they want to do, how they want to do it, what they want to believe it. It suits me to believe this. It doesn't suit me to believe that, even though that's the truth from scripture. Those people are being Pied Piper down the broad path and God has a problem with that. And his true children have a problem with that. His true children are not walking an elitist path where they're trying to tell everybody else what they know and that everybody else needs to know it. And you need to walk this path because you're not the chosen people. If you don't, that's a spirit of pride. His true children are saying those facts, but because it's breaking their heart, because they see that the others are lost, because they actually want to reach down and serve humanity and be the lowliest and the last one to take a serving from the Lord in order to serve humanity, pick them up, lift them up, esteem them, show them the truth, get the truth to them and help get them set free by the true gospel, the true reconnecting as they introduce the king as the ambassadors that they are to the lost and wayward souls that are perishing. If you have a teacher, an evangelist, a prophet, an apostle, a pastor, anyone that you're following who is not talking about the redemption of wayward man's conduct and person inside that is to be reunited to God holy, walk his paths and course in life the way he conducts himself, connected to him, married to him and partnering with him in this life and coming out of sinning and transgressing his way, out of rebellion to him, uh, you need to get rid of that that teacher and that it, it doesn't matter if they're saying things that sound good and are nice none of that matters because if they're not if they are not in this hour talking about the repentance of wicked hearts they're not right with god we can talk about we should worship and praise him and sing some songs and dance before him and twirl some flags and do all of that and write some poems and paint some pictures with him. But if we're not out there doing the Great Commission, we don't, we're not caring about the other people, the lost and the wayward. If we're not talking about, wait a minute, are you, in a, are you upholding the truth within? Because if you're not upholding the truth within, are, are you keeping his words? He told you, and they who keep my word. Wait, 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 wait. Are you doing the will of the Father? Because all those other things can be good things, but they are distractions from the main purpose, which is the Great Commission, which is pulling people out of the fire and connecting them to a holy God so that he himself can witness the good news of the gospel, which is his person, and that we too can be reconciled back to God and reconformed back into his image again. Coming out of disagreement coming into agreement agreeing that they fundamentally uphold truth righteousness and holiness and are choosing to be reconciled with that because that is him if you fundamentally don't want to be reconciled with truth holiness and righteousness you fundamentally don't want to be reconciled with the living god in which you were formed and came from point blank i'll not mince it he just said because it's the truth that makes a man free when it's rooted and grounded in them and you have a foundation built on the truth, that means your person functions fundamentally, 
founded in truth and living it, becoming it. If you're not doing that, you're not founded on truth. You're not founded on the rock. You're not coming through the door. You're not shaking the hand of God, let alone becoming one with him in this world. And you don't understand salvation. He's very firm. And I'm not. Yes, Lord. He said, you're not going to mince it and you're not going to back off. Because we have a lot of people who are about to depart this earth and you're going to be held accountable for whether or not you told the truth of salvation and faith, Janet, if you know it. If I know to do good and I do it not, that is sin. God told me that. That's what he told all of us in scripture. The good that I can do is to express what he has shown me over and over in scripture and get the truth of it out to the best of my ability with him and by his spirit for the rest of mankind. When we cross over, he's going to go, what'd you do for, for mankind? What did you do? How did you serve them? And how did you love mankind? And it ain't going to be, um, it's not just going to be, I spoke nice words to them and um, I told them what they wanted to hear and I hugged them and we danced and we sang songs together. It's whether or not we got the truth and him to them showing the way. Did we do the Great Commission? Did you lay your life down? Did you give up everything you could have been doing in this earth that you wanted to do? Did you give all that up to do what the Holy Spirit was telling you to do? And in that, did you witness Christ? Because you were reformed inside. Because the truth and the way and God himself got rooted inside of you. He founded his own kingdom inside of you because that's what you wanted. And you were rooted and grounded in faith and truth and righteousness and holiness and the king of the king of righteousness was exalted within you and you turned and you showed and you shared and you brought him to the rest of the world that was dying that is what's going to matter in the end so whether or not you are going through the consecration and sanctification pr process with him matters it matters greatly for yourself it matters greatly for yourself in this world right now not for eternity alone because there, are, there's, there's a spirit of death that's coming through this world, and he's going to talk about some of that in here. And it, and it was the same before as it is now. The spirit of death came for the wicked and those who were estranged from God and did not uphold him nor his ways. And it's coming again. So if we know that, this is why he's got me on the topic of, of salvation and faith and whether or not we truly know it. Because we're going to have to have the lamb, the king, the blood, the truth, holiness and righteousness upheld within us for real. So that's the only thing that's going to get us through this period. And it's the only thing that will allow God to be able to witness his very spirit right straight through us to a lost and dying world to pull in a last harvest. In gross and great darkness. As we now, because we have pulled the king and the lamb and the blood and the true gospel, the true Jesus, reconciling to him and to the father, upholding righteousness and holiness within us, upholding the truth. Within, because of that, people will see us. They will see the holy living God and his light in us and the truth, and they will be set free because we upheld it. We lived it. We became it. We became founded and rooted in the right tree. And that tree and his roots and his supply and all that he is was rooted and grounded in us. And we were founded on the truth for real. We were founded on the rock and our vessel did not fall apart as if it was built on sand because it was built on the rock. The foundation's real. Got to have a real foundation. And he said, with that, we're going to go into this. So your salvation and faith. Our faith is the working of what we believe. What we believe is what spiritual understanding, workings, and deity and attributes of that deity that we believe. If we are Christian, our faith is what gospel we believe. And there is the great discrepancy. Many believe a different gospel with a different Jesus. Jesus Christ's life must be studied to understand the God of Scripture, our Father in whom we come from. What is he like? What is his nature? What did he do? What are his followers or children to do or be? Jesus is a person 
a specific person, a specific God, and has a specific conduct of himself that sets him apart from all other spirits or gods, including the fallen human nature that is worked from the fallen spirit seed that was implanted into us from the garden. The true gospel of the kingdom of heaven, God's holy domain, is that is that Christ Jesus, the Godhead bodily, came in the similitude or likeness of sinful flesh, condemned sin, sin in his flesh, gave the perfect walked out life following the law or the conduct of God, heaven, given to Moses that sinful man could not accomplish on his own, then became the perfect sacrifice laid upon the eternal altar to atone man from his sins, bringing him back into reconciliations, legally forgiving his sin debt to the living and holy God once again, paving the way for a new creation to be established in Christ that would bring God holy and his creation back together in oneness, reconciled, stitched back together, salvation. And with the walking out of that salvation, relationship restored, reformation process begun to be same as like once again inside in the inner man, returning him to godliness again, father's image, leads to the works of the faith. He said, without a working faith or a productive and successful faith, it is a dead faith. And what is death again? It is separation, a difference, and a distance from God holy. It is estrangement, and the root of estranged is strangers. Essentially, if we have a faith, a belief structure in us of the gospel that is not changing us back into God holy's image once again, creating a new creation entirely of us, we have been walking a dead faith out. We are still estranged from God, his ways, his character, his nature, his attributes, his demeanor, disposition, fruits of his spirit, his conduct in us. If we do not regain his conduct of his person in us, we have denied his Holy Spirit's job, reformation of our inner person that brings us into all truth. Folks, we have to become the gospel, living epistles. We have to become the truth bodily, same as Christ. We have to have a new nature within us or nothing changed. We were brought out of nothing. We were saved from nothing and we still remain estranged or strangers with the living God inside. We are not like same as, nor are we believing that we are supposed to be. Why do we think the lukewarm or non-committal does not make it in the end? Because they would not submit to being reformed inside and confess only with their mouths that God is God, Jesus is the Savior, Jesus is Lord, but they remained pharisaical and walked in compromise and hypocrisy, not true, with a pure heart, loving the truth, Scripture says. Christ was not formed in them. They did not have Christ founded in them. Definition founded, established, and originated, constructed, or base according to a particular principle root definition bottom and base and also another root definition is melt and pour so when one is rooted in christ and christ is rooted in them they will uphold and live the truth and the course the way of righteousness the way of christ for he is the way or the course to live the truth his person's conduct and principles and that's the only life there is this is life in Christ as Christ's life or course and truth is upheld in us. He is poured into us the truth, scripture, his principled way, and we are refined, melted, and poured out into a new creation in Christ. This is the refiner's fires. And we have a bottom or a base or a foundation now, Christ, founded in us, and we are now founded upon the rock, and the rock has been upheld in us, established and constructed into us, we become the truth. We become Christ-like again, returning to his image, godliness. Salvation, where two were estranged in their ways and relationship, now reconciled to one another and have come back together inside relationally and become one in spirit once again. John seventeen eleven, Holy Father, keep through your own name those whom you have given me, that they may be one as we are. John seventeen twenty two, and the glory which you gave me I have given them that they may be one as we are one. Ever wonder why we have marriage down here in this world other than to repopulate? It is to simulate the perfect union between God and man restored spiritually in the earth where two were separated or strangers and are now one in agreement, marriage. 
and become two in one flesh body. This is the reconciled relationship with God. And man walked out in a reformed person who is in agreement within now. No sinful nature upheld that is separating them and making them strangers or estranged from one another. One part of the definition of estranged is not in agreement. Mark 10, 8. And they twain shall be one in flesh. So then they are no more twain, but one in flesh. God has a goal where we and he are one in the flesh married. This is why he speaks of coming for a bride. She will be those who have married to his spirit inside and became like same as he and are in agreement with the spirit and in their own spirit and whom walks it out in their flesh. Because God holy is walking in their flesh, living incarnate once again in this man. The religion this man upholds, the faith of his religious persuasion, belief system coincides with God holy, how he lives, operates, and finds his being. He is upheld in this person. This person has assimilated back into the truth, the rightful image of God holy once again through the reformation process, the work that the Holy Spirit is to be doing in us all. He who brings us into all truth. What does that mean? Bring us into all truth. It means where we were walking different than God holy. His job now in the one who accepts him as Lord and Savior will now honor his spirit coming into them, saving them from the fallen nature of Satan, and will now lord over them in leadership, leading them in his ways. Follow after me, he said, after his way and person. Our faith is what we believe, and that is demonstrated in our actions. Our salvation is of God, and he comes in and saves us from something and someone. From our sin nature, the nature of death, hell, and estrangement, the nature wherewith we were not same as God and his person and truth, righteousness walked out, and from Satan, the opponent, the one who is contrary to God and his nature, opposite. This is why salvation has not human workings. It took God to complete the Mosaic law or fulfill it flawlessly. And that Mosaic law was the written example of God's holiness. Hence why fallen man could not walk it out perfect and would ever will in a fallen realm, in fallen flesh. But since Christ did it, fulfilled or completed that requirement, we now are to have a working faith. What does that mean again? We are to have a religious belief system in us now that lives what we believe spiritually and has proofs of what we really believe in our hearts because we become what we believe. Now, if we believe Jesus came to reconcile wayward man to a righteous God and we are to not only confess with our mouths that Jesus is our Lord now, leading us around by his very person and by the truth of the scriptures, but we are to believe in our heart unto righteousness. We are to be of those who believe or be living in righteousness now. This means we come out of unrighteous living and we assimilate back into godliness because our gospel, the true witness of Christ, shows us that a repentance is to take place, which is a complete turnaround, seeing we are sinful and estranged from God in his ways of righteousness, receive God in his righteousness, and now walk with God on his paths or course and ways of righteousness. If we are Christian, we will be Christlings, and if we are Christ seedlings, we will duplicate his spirit in this earth, in our earthen vessels. If we are reprobate still, we are of those who confess with their lips, but are far from him in the heart, and that is where your true treasure is found, Matthew 6, 21. Then we are hypocrites. These were called Pharisees and Sadducees in the scripture. They were PhDs or doctors of the law, memorizers of it, but they could not see the living God's spirit incarnate, Yeshua, when he stood in front of them and witnessed the living God holy to them. Spiritually blind they were, based upon living reprobate or contrary to his actual spirit's ways and conduct of his person. We cannot be reprobate or estranged from God in his ways and claim we are his as his child. It is a juxtaposition, a contrary and opposite manner, spirit, and conduct. Juxtaposition, definition, the fact of two things being seen or placed close together, but with a contrasting effect. We must be born anew, or again, in spirit. 
and that new spirit in us must lead our souls in proper conduct, becoming of our Lord and his. And a spirit is a conduct, attitude, disposition, demeanor, character, attributes, nature, and way of a person. If our spirit nature is contrary to God's Holy Spirit, if our demeanor, disposition, attributes of how we conduct ourselves, our nature and ways are contrary to God, holy, righteous, and true, we are not of him. We have a dead or estranged faith and spirit. If we believe that having faith in Jesus requires no efforts on our part to come into agreement with him, if we believe that we do not have a part to play in a partnership relationship to be faithful and true to him, if we believe we do not need to change and deny that he came to reconcile us to himself and in him is no darkness, nor is darkness allowed in him, and that he said those in him and he in them are now one, and we fundamentally have a dead or estranged, useless and vain faith that stems from an unregenerate spirit in us, a dead spirit and in whom our soul follows after. He is salvation. His salvation is perfect. But if we deny his salvation where he came to reconcile us to himself, reform us out of Satan's image, bring us back together where we were before, estranged and in disagreement following Satan and his broken fallen nature, we have rejected the righteous king. We have rejected holiness. We have rejected righteousness. We have rejected becoming one with him in spirit and conduct. And we have fundamentally, foundationally rejected becoming reformed into his image once again, the shape of God holy. Salvation is not only a profession of the truth. Salvation is the walking out of our lives now in the truth. It is our lives becoming the truth. It is our person becoming as like same as God holy again and being reconciled within to now become one in flesh, ours. Without this working faith, without this profession of the truth and being brought into living the truth and being reformed into a new creation who agrees with God holy, with holiness, with righteous living, where we believe he is who he says he is and we adhere to him and to his truth, we are then a people who do not agree to be same as like with him, nor to return to his image, nor to be new now and not estranged or strangers who disagree with one another. We refuse or reject salvation where two now become one in agreement inside flesh. And in that we have refused the whole purpose of salvation to bring man back into relationship with him. And he's holy and righteous and darkness cannot coexist with light to be changed back into his image of holiness and righteousness, righteous living again, where to become one entity in Christ Jesus. The priests of God, as we are a people of holy priests and kings, will walk with their holy priestly God as he walks, breathes, and finds his being, for they are one with him in agreement and becoming, and becoming his image again. They have a working faith, not a dead and estranged belief system, but one of life, and they are being returned to life, that's Christ, in relations to the holy righteous God. We will return to being priestly, and if we disagree with that, we will not return to him, for he's coming for his partner, bride, the one who said yes to him in his proposal, engagement, and who is now betrothed to him, married his spirit, and they have become one in flesh now, the man's flesh who truthfully accepted being returned to him and returning to his image of light, holiness, and righteousness and righteous living. We cannot claim Christ only. We have to live with Christ, be found in Christ, and Christ in us. In agreement, reconciled, a new creation or two have now become one entity in agreement now, and the difference is seen, heard, and known. A new man made into the image of Christ Jesus once again by Christ Jesus, and of which Christ Jesus is living, breathing in their flesh, and finding his being once again. Do we not understand he wants to walk and talk with us in the cool of the day since the beginning? That doesn't mean outside of us. It means inside of us, where his kingdom is, where we uphold him, and we do not rebel him or are estranged from him. What happened to Adam and Eve when they said no to him inside was that they then became souls who had become estranged from God within and now had to seek him from within again to reconcile with him. 
He wants to walk with us. That is our course of life, folks. He wants to talk with us. That's the interior communion once again restored. Where two are not in disagreement or rebellion to him, but have now accepted him back inside to reform from their criminal behavior or their transgressing him in his ways and rejecting him in his ways and leadership in them again. And now desire to accept him back into the leadership role within them, except becoming like him again holy and righteous and submissive in obedience to his person as their father once again and come out of alignment with doing their own thing out of satan's counsels and ways if we are not allowing the holy spirit to bring us into being living epistles those who are the truth now incarnate as jesus exemplified then we have missed the point of salvation to reconcile us to him again we must obtain his nature and conduct again his course and that will come by upholding the truth, his conduct and nature within, again, and coming out of lies, compromise, excuses, self-leadership, not being reformed back into his image, nor coming into agreement with the spirit and how his spirit lives. He is life, and we have to come into living in and from life, not living in and from death or estrangement where two persons differ and are not in agreement. They are estranged and strangers to one another. He did say he will he will say to many, depart, I never knew you. This is because they were strangers to one another, and they differed inside in their spirits and souls. They were not like same as, nor in agreement about being like same as in their conduct, in holiness, in righteous living. Salvation has no works of our own. It took Christ Jesus and his perfect self to complete the Mosaic law. But our faith does have workings, and he told us to work out our salvation. That means to exercise it, use it, demonstrate what we are saved from, and whom we are saved from, and whom we are reconciled unto, and what we are now living in, truth, holiness, and righteous living, with fear, honoring him and reverencing righteous living and trembling, knowing we have to really become this, no faking or claiming only, or he will say, I never knew you because we were not actually like same as, nor did we become one in agreement with each other and how to conduct our person. Or if we will not do that, we have a dead faith, which he equated as a soul or person without a living spirit, and that makes the body, the sound whole of that person, dead. We must have a living faith with the living God who walks in righteousness and holy and is holy, and our belief system of religious belief should align with him, righteousness and holiness, as we throw down on righteousness and unholiness and rebellion to him and become one entity in our flesh who agree with God holy and is conducted by him. We obey his, we obey his commanding of us and his ways. Salvation is a verb. It is an act that God does by his power, spirit, and works in us to reform us reconcile us, forgive us, lead us out of sin and death and into life. We could not do this alone. We needed the finished workings of Christ to do this, but it is a verb in that the Holy Spirit has a work of his own to do in us as he brings us into all truthful living, as we become the truth embodied, just as Christ exemplified to us. He did what the Father did, and he said what the Father said. This is oneness walked out. Faith is a verb. It is an action of walking out what our gospel is, or to become one again in agreement, not estranged nor strangers any longer, but to our like same as in agreement with holiness and righteous living, and are walking that out as the Holy Spirit does his work in convicting us and assisting us in reforming us from our fallenness and being restored, redeemed, reconfigured, and made anew in Christ Jesus. But it is a verb in the sense that our faith must show what we really are in our hearts. For if Christ, holiness, righteousness, the heavenly way, conduct, demeanor, disposition, character, attributes, and nature of godliness is a treasure in there for real, it will spill forth in a living faith. It will spill forth from the heart. He will spill forth from the heart of this man, his whole soul. For God, holy, is the treasure erected in this man's heart or soul, and he's been allowed to work his works in this man, 
to have now agreed to be on the same page, like same, same as and ruled by his spirit, not the spirit of self, Satan, or fallenness and rebellion, or being contrary to God's ways and person any longer. Christ has a job to do, salvation in man. And we have a job to do, walk out or exercise that salvation given to us in our faith walk. That in which shows the world, God, and ourselves who and what is erected as the treasure in our hearts for real. God holy, his righteous holiness, truth and obedience to him, or continued in rebellion, not in agreement to become a righteous and holy person again, as like how he originally made us, nor how he himself his, is his image, and not in obedience to him, nor his reformation process that needs to take place in us. The choice has always been ours. We cannot save ourselves, but we are to allow him to save us. And that salvation comes freely from him and involves his spirit coming in to save us from someone and something, Satan and the fallen nature, self-leadership based in being contrary to God, holy and righteous and true, and bringing us into living all truth, not just an understanding of truth with no application. No. Where two become one entity in agreement and under one leader, God holy, who uphold righteousness, holiness, truth, and love. And he said, if you really do love me, you will obey me again. Why is God going over all of this so meticulously now? Because we are entering a place in time where many will soon be departing in mass. We need the truth of the gospel walked out in our lives through a living faith, not a dead one. The thief on the cross had zero amount of time to walk out the faith he believed. He had no time to transgress God and his ways because he was about to cross over from life to death on a cross. We are to be dying on a cross too. We are given time, a long death on a cross process, where we are still walking, talking, breathing, and moving about in actions of our will. And in this, we have to have a faith that proves our belief system which gospel and which Jesus we are believing in and upholding for real inside. Matthew 24, 24, For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Many are deceived already. Many are believing in a different Jesus, a different way back to reconciling with the Father and not the one Jesus walked out nor exemplified where he only did what his father showed him to do, and the elect are being deceived and will continue to be if they do not uphold the true gospel and true God of holiness and righteousness and his spirit wherewith they have become one and he is erected inside on the heart throne for real. It is possible for the elect to be deceived, the chosen, if they fall back into lies, hence, and they fell away, being repeated over and over again in scripture. Second Kings 25.11 Now the rest of the people that were left in the city and the refugees that fell away to the king of Babylon. Now that says a lot right there, spiritually speaking, doesn't it? Those who fell away from God holy by falling into upholding Babylon, the carnal nature being exalted within lies, seductions of the pride of life and by the lusts of the flesh. Now I realize this is a phrase and it's taken out of second Kings that was talking about where, um, where the the king the king of Babylon Nebuchadnezzar was um, taking people captive. I understand that that context right here of this phrase means that what was taking place in there. But he said, just read that that sentence right there or that phrase right there in a spiritual context. If if there's the rest of the people, that's a remnant that were left in a city. A remnant of people left in a city or a place like Earth, like here. And they and the fugitives that they are the fugitives that fell away to the king of Babylon. In general, that statement is what he's saying. We cannot fall away into Babylon and we have to get Babylon out of us, come out from among her. Those who fell away from God holy by falling into upholding Babylon, the carnal nature being exalted within lies, seductions of and the pride of life and by the lusts of the flesh. Jeremiah 39 9, then Nebuzardan the captain of the guard, carried away captive into Babylon the remnant of the people that remained in the city and those that fell away, that fell to him with the rest of the people that remained. 
spiritually speaking, if we allow the spirit of this world to carry us away inside upholding Babylonian culture, lust of the flesh and pride of life, we will be brought into bondage, chosen and elect or not. God is not mocked. What a man sows, he will reap back to him. Romans 10, 9 and 10. That if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you too shall be saved. He said put two in there for emphasis. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. What do these verses mean? They mean that with your mouth you confess or profess something. In this case, that Jesus is now your Lord. That he will move you about by his person and you will succumb to his requests willingly and will delight in following after him and his course way of life. And as we truly start to live this or be live or believe from our hearts where our treasure is held, who, what we really cherish and uphold, we will believe that God raised Jesus from a corruptible state into incorruption. And we too, God will raise from a death state, estranged and out of alignment with him in his course of life. And from being strangers to those who now know each other and live life together as one, like same as. And into believing and walking that out with God, we too shall be saved. As God saved or redeemed Christ from death to life and life abundant with the Father, the leader of him and his ways, conduct and course. Because with the newly regenerate heart, man believes or belives us and starts walking that new belief system out with the new God and Lord of him who finds his course walking in righteousness and holiness, upheld in his heart for real now. Because the king and his righteousness is a treasure in this man's heart now, his soul and righteousness is now upheld within and now with this man's confession, the confession of life with Christ in Christ and Christ in them, like same as in agreement, not estranged any longer, nor strangers who disagree. God and this man became one entity, slaying sin, condemning it in this person's flesh now. And this man is saved by his Savior, his Lord, bringing them back together by his salvation he offered and by being allowed to perform his work inside this man, bringing him into living the truth as a living epistle, a living witness of oneness. As he walks out that living faith, what that man really believes, who he really believes in, and what that man is really living, and under whom he is really living inside, in affiliation with and under obedience to, by the confession of his faith in Christ, as his Savior, Lord, and God, the Father of him, and his course or way. First Timothy 6, 3-5 through 5, If any man teaches otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strifes of words, whereof comes envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings, or perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds, and who are destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness from such withdraw yourself if some come if someone comes along and teaches a different way that goes contrary to what our savior himself lived and taught the doctrine that is according to godliness then we are to withdraw ourselves from such because they will walk in pride and they know nothing we are not to dispute with them, argue with them. We are not to function in strife, evil surmisings, railing, accusations, envy, or endless questions of words of strife, people who want to argue the word or doctrine, for they are not of the Holy Spirit. Separate from these, separate from this and these. First John two eighteen through 20. Little children, it is the last of time. And as you have heard, that Antichrist shall come to play even now. There are many antichrists whereby we know that it is the last of time. They went out from us. They claimed to walk with us and be of us, but they were not of us. They were compromised, believing a different gospel and a different Jesus or Savior. For if they had been of us, they would have no doubt continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest or shown that they were not all of us. But you have an unction and it comes from the Holy One. And you know all things. He told me to add those emphasis in there for understanding. We are to be living the truth as following after Christ Jesus. And we know the truth. And so the truth has made us free. The truth and the spirit thereof has a job to do in us. 
cleanse us, sanctify us. Father, I sanctify myself for their sakes, that they too shall be sanctified by your truth and to bring us into all truth. Holy Spirit has a job to return us to the image of the Son who walks in righteousness, is holy, and follows after the Father. What he shows, he does. If we will fundamentally not uphold God in truth, who his person is, what his person does, how he operates, what is what his example is, obeying his person, submitting ourselves once again to his leadership in us, and to return to his image, we fundamentally reject salvation and have a dead spirit, a dead soul, and a dead faith. Again, why is understanding godliness and returning to his image so important right now? Because the spirit of death is roaming about, seeking whom it can destroy and devour once again, and we need the lamb on the throne within us, the blood on the altar of our hearts, bringing us into all truth and life and the king seated within as the treasure we buried in our field or our hearts, wherewith we gave up all else, sold out to him truth and righteousness coming out of sin to bury him and his truth deep inside us because we actually desire to be with him, like him, return to him and his image upheld within. Romans 8, 29, for whom he did foreknow, he also predestined to be conformed into the image or likeness of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Jesus was father's first example of how to walk out sonship properly, and we are to be following after him. We are to be walking as he walked and walks. That's the course of our lives according to the ways of godliness. And we are to be talking with our Father, communing, relationship, obedience, love, respect, following after his command of him, his leadership, counsels, and ways, as Jesus had relations with our Father. We are coming full circle back to the relationship that fell apart in the garden once again. And we are rectifying and resurrecting that relationship. He said right here, that is what resurrecting the tabernacle of David is. Read it again. We are coming full circle back to the relationship that fell apart in the garden once again, and we are rectifying and resurrecting that relationship. What does it mean to rectify and resurrect or re-erect a relationship? Rectify. Definition means put right again, correct, convert into a direct current. That would be overflowing of the Holy Spirit, flowing waters of holiness, living waters and function within us. Purify and refine. And the root definition is right. Resurrect is, or to re-erect, is restore from death to life, spiritual or physical. Revive the practice, use, or memory. Bring new vigor to. And the root definition is rise again. And it says, re see resurgent, which is the same definition. So, can we see to be resurrected from death to life in Christ is when we become something we were not and return to whom we were always supposed to be as how we were made and are to be remade back into the image of godliness? We are to rise again from death estrangement to in disagreement, not like same as strangers, state of being into reconciliation, alive in Christ, where two are reconciled, brought back into oneness, agree and are now like same as, not strangers nor estranged, but together again. And this rectifies our relationship, relations, puts us right again inside, and with the relationship restored with God, we have been converted into a direct current or flow of godliness once again by his spirit and our spirit at one again, too, are now one in flesh, having slain and condemned the sin nature in their flesh, like Christ showed to do. Salvation is much more than confession, it's a verb where God has a work to do in us to conform us to his son's image once again, where we started. And he desires to bring us full circle back to being like same as and reconciled in our relations. Faith is much more than a confession. It's a verb wherewith we have our part to do in this two-way relationship partnership, where we come back to where we started with God in walking his way and talking with the father as like Jesus exemplified as we follow after him and his example Salvation has work to do his workings in us, and our faith has works to do his works, his good pleasure, his ways and course and conduct performed in us as he reforms us back into his image. And we have to partner with God for this to happen. He is not a tyrant, 
but a gentleman who gives us free will to obey or rebel against him and his course or way in our lifetimes. I pray we will come into agreement with him and allow him to do his work in us in ref reformation, corrections, teaching, raising us, leading us, and saving our souls as he brings us into the image of the sun, returning us full circle to where we left him in the garden, in the heart and the soul. Only we can agree to stop kicking against him and come into obedience and submission to his spirit's work in us. And we do this by exercising the salvation given to us, coming into agreement with the Spirit and walking as He walks and talking and communing with our Father as like He did and does. The choice is ours. It has always been. We must have a living faith that upholds our salvation, for we were to be saved from someone and something and brought back to someone and something. God holy in His righteous lifestyle, the conduct of His person we are being refined back into. Salvation is Him. Faith is our true walk with him. Our hearts hold the treasure we really exalt within. If it's him, truly, we will uphold the truth, righteousness, holiness, God, holy, and his leadership in us. We will be saved from sin and unrighteous living. We will be conformed back into looking, sounding, and acting like God, holy, godliness restored again. And we will be resurrected from the dead, estrangement and different, strangers and we will become as one spirit within where two now uphold godliness inside and condemn sin in their flesh because these two have truly married hence the bride of christ salvation and faith go hand in hand in marriage literally take the hand of god and become a married couple intertwined for eternity who uphold one another inside and out and folks, that's what he's given me today. He wanted to talk again about what is salvation. What 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 was what what was my whole point in bringing it about? What was my whole point of slaying myself since the beginning, since before the foundations of anything created? Why did I do what I did, and what was the result and goal that I was that I was doing this all for. And that was to be reconciled with him again, which means to come back into oneness together again. It is very much taking his hand in marriage. It's very much taking the hand of God and marrying to his spirit. When you marry, you become one flesh, one entity now. And he wants to do this intertwining with us now and for eternity. And he upholds us and we uphold him. And this is how to become one. In this life, when you uphold marriage to someone, the two of you are upholding coming together in an agreement to live life together for the rest of your lives as like same. It doesn't mean that our personalities in all ways are as like same, but it means our conduct of upholding each other and being faithful and loyal to one another is. And God said in his marriage to him, we have to return to his shape and image. He predestined us to do that because why? Because in the garden, when he first created man, um, we fell away from his counsels and his ways and his leadership and him fathering us. We rebelled against him and we became something juxtaposed to him or two are close, but they differ in contrast greatly. And so he's bringing us back into that reconciled relationship again. If we'll have it, if we want to go all the way full circle back to the garden where if many of us have said, Adam and Eve rejected you and I wish that they wouldn't have or, or I wish that we could could change that. You can. That's the whole point. You can change that now because in the new Adam, in Christ, he's teaching you how to do that, how to walk it out and exercise what he gave you, which is relationship back with the living God. Go back into the heart, go back into the garden soil and cultivate a new creation there, a reformed man inside who looks and sounds and smells and operates and walks like the living holy God again, because you want to submit yourself to him and you want to submit yourself to his hand to reform form you back into that and take his hand in marriage, take his hand in union. That is what salvation is. And that is our faith walked out when we allow him to do that process in us. His, salvation is his works, not ours, but they're still ongoing. Um, he, 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 finished, he finished his mission. 
he finished making the way, but the Holy Spirit still has a work to do in us, bringing us into all truth and reconforming us back into the image of the Son. That didn't happen the moment you said yes to him. That began your process of the Holy Spirit and you walking out life eternally now together. A partnership that lasts eternal, that lasts forever. And in that, your faith shows that. Your faith will demonstrate that that's taking place inside. That's why your faith has workings. Your demonstration, the performance or manifestation of the two of you's relationship for real, where the truth, him, and his course or lifestyle and way, his conduct, his character, his demeanor, his disposition, his nature, etc., his course, his way, he the truth, he the way, brought you into life, the tree, and you you are grafted into the tree of life now, and the tree of life is grafted into you. You have become one cohesive entity. This is salvation. This is the faith of that salvation or the faith of that true gospel, the gospel that Jesus Christ came, and he paved the way, and he blew out all the stops, and he made reconciliation to the Father available again to everyone who will accept him and his Holy Spirit. And when his Holy Spirit comes in, his Holy Spirit has a job to do, which is return you to the image of the Son and to lead you back to the Father in communion. And as you do that, you have a living faith, not a dead faith any longer. You have a living spirit, not a dead spirit any longer. And your soul is brought back to life or quickened now in Christ Jesus. And folks, do you know that there's another stage of that left? He just said, glorified bodies, quickening our mortal bodies, as Romans 8 said. There is a phase and a stage where he is going to manifest through his children. It will be the manifestation of the Romans, a child, the sons and daughters of the living God, who he himself will manifest through. They will be, they will be those that are of the manifestation of the 144,000. Now, there, those will be a certain amount of people in the earth. They will be the witnesses. So where God and his spirit and the spirit of that man and God's soul and that man's soul have now become one in agreement and are walking that out, witnessing to the world, two witnesses that have become one. And yes, there are witnesses um, in all different formats. We could we could talk so many different layers of what that means spiritually. But ultimately, those who are who are doing that with him, who have paid the price. They have been stripped and refined and they have been pruned and they have gone through the fuller soap and the scrubbing with the word and they continue this process with him and they bowed down and they gave up everything that this life could offer them. When Satan came to offer all the kingdoms to them, they said no and they refused it all and threw it down because that's what Yeshua showed them to do. That's what the first exemplary son that was born again showed them to do. And they have become the the last ones to receive um, of of luxury and comfort and 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 the shining flashing lights of everything that the allure of this world can offer them, giving that up to serve and wash the feet of Yeshua. That's all they want to do. They want to sit at his feet and soak up everything about him. And as they do that, he washes their feet and he scrubs them clean. They allow him to do his work because they value his person. They value his image and they want to be just like their father again. They want him to clean them up. They fundamentally uphold righteousness and holiness and truth within. It's very treasured and it has rooted in and it has been founded in them. They are founded on the rock and the rock lives right out of them. The foundation lives right out of these. These will witness to the others the path and the way and the course and the truth. And they will roll out the red carpet as the ambassadors that they are for the king. And they will introduce others during this great commission work. And as this takes place, more laborers will be pulled in to continue the harvest the commission and the earth to pull people out of the out of the out of the clutches of Satan and out of his kingdom and into the fold of the family and safety and redemption and freedom and salvation. But we have to have a people who understand salvation and the walk of faith now who are assimilating back into the image of God, godliness, and the truth is rooted and founded in them and it is their foundation. As we do that then we can turn and help the others. As we as we behold the original 
the perfection of the apple of our eye. We watch how he is. We study him. We practice his ways within our lives. We will stand out amongst the others and we will be beacons in a in a dark and gross storm of, of complete evil darkness that is going to overtake the earth. And in that, during a great famine of the word of God, he's a person, during a great famine of where is the light, these will shine forth because he will shine forth in them for he has anointed them to preach the good tidings to the meek. Those are those that are ready to reform and to set captives free and take the bonds and the shackles off of them and mend broken hearts. Those are his kids and they're leaders for a reason. They're pioneers for a reason. They were willing to plow these super hard sacrificial lives of living the truth and giving up everything in this world and being mocked and persecuted and rejected and separated and refined and refined and cut and cut and put under the pressure like a diamond over and over until they will shine and reflect his very image. That is where the when the famine of the word is here that people will be able to know who walks with the living God and carries the truth, him. And there's a purpose to all of it. It's this great harvest. And in that, we are going to prepare a people that are fit vessels for the use of the Lord. They are people prepared for the Lord, and they are fit vessels for the indwelling of the Holy Spirit within them. And they will be sanctified, which is cleansed and cleaned and scrubbed by the word of God himself and the word of the truth in scripture. And then they will be consecrated vessels set aside for one purpose and one purpose only. And that's for the indwelling of the Holy Spirit and for God to will and to do his good pleasure in them. That's it. And in that, reconciliations take place, salvation takes place, people live eternal with the holy God, and they become one with him, and they are saved, and the kingdom enemy is thrown down inside, and God and God's holy righteous ways and his truth are upheld within, and this man avoids the second death. This is what he wanted me to bring forth today, uh, folks, for a clear understanding because of the time we're in. And I pray, Father, that we lock down with you and we receive all of this truth into our person and we receive your Holy Spirit to do the work within us and we bow to you in willingness to allow you to do this reformation process and that we find it beautiful and we delight in the process of, of becoming like you and being able to walk that out and be able to witness to the rest of the world who needs desperately to know the living God and be returned to him because my God is breaking inside of his being because he wishes for none to perish, but he knows many will. So whom we can save, we will go after and pull them out of the fire together. And in that our God delights and that some will be saved. I pray that you help us to do the work, our part of the relationship that we have to do as you do your work and we come into agreement with you and stop kicking against your pricks so that the rest of the world can actually see and know the living God through us because we are reformed by watching the original and attaining all of his attributes into us, all of the truth that he is into us and become living epistles, become living Bibles, living truth founded in us the rock upon this rock i will build my separated ones that's what he said we've got to get that truth rooted and grounded in us we have to live it we have to be founded on the truth and father that's your goal and that's what you're after and that's what you'll get may the people prepare themselves inside to come into alignment with the holy living god and may you lead us to those people who are ready to receive the holy living God. And may you help us every day to throw down anything that sets itself wickedly against you and the knowledge of the truth. And may the truth be rooted and grounded in us because that would be Christ rooted and grounded in us and living out of our very persons. And I thank you, Christ Jesus, for all that you have exemplified and all of the work that you are still continuously doing in us to bring us about in a full understanding of what salvation is and what you did, why it was so important, all that you went through just to make the way back. 
And then now that that way has been made and we accepted the way, the truth, the life, you and reconciliation back to the father in relationship, that we'll now have a living faith that is full of living works because life himself will be living straight out of us because we too have become one in agreement and like same in spirit. And we will fulfill your dream, Father. We will fulfill your dream, Yeshua. Father, I pray that they will be one as we are one. That is what we will witness to the world together. You and us, every one of your children who will do this with you and live this with you. And in that, we'll pull many out of the fire. So I thank you profusely for all that you have done and all that you are, Yeshua HaMashiach, the Godhead bodily incarnate, for being incarnate with us again inside, leading us back to the Father, to the truth, to the way, to life, to being your children. I love you very much.